Hello students, welcome to EPG Paatshala. I am Professor Geeta Bansal from Punjab University, Chandigarh. Today, we are going to talk on the module Group Interpersonal Relations from the paper Organizational Behavior. My dear students, after going through the lesson, you should be able to understand how to maintain healthy interpersonal relations in the organizations through transactional analysis. You will be able to appreciate the concept of life positions, which is an important part of transactional analysis as a way of understanding individual behavior in the organizations. Of course, you will be able to know the importance of Johari window in improving the interpersonal relations in the organization. Let's get into the introduction of what do you mean by transactional analysis and what is the importance of interpersonal relations. Well, talking of interpersonal relations, one is reminded of Herzberg's two-factor theory of motivation in which interpersonal relations at the workplace, be it with your colleagues, subordinates or superiors, is treated as a hygiene factor. The presence of which does not contribute to job satisfaction, but its absence leads to dissatisfaction. I hope you remember this theory. Thereby establishing the importance of interpersonal relations at the workplace. Hence, it can be viewed as one of the significant aspects in the achievement of the organizational goals. It's therefore very important that good interpersonal relations prevail at all levels in the organizational hierarchy. Now, interpersonal relations can be better managed through the understanding of the concepts of transaction analysis, understanding life positions, stroking and Johari window. We'll discuss these four things in a short while. Now, in this chapter, we'll take some lessons from the above mentioned concepts to understand and improve interpersonal relations, both at the personal as well as at the interpersonal relations, as well as at the professional level. Now, let's talk about transaction analysis, first of all. Transaction analysis aims at improving the communication and interpersonal relations between the individuals which is a proven method that helps two persons communicate and behave on the job in a mature manner by understanding each other's motives by entering into complementary transactions. On the other hand, the concept of life positions, which is an important part of transactional analysis as a way of understanding individual behavior in the organizations is another significant tool of enhancing interpersonal understanding and appreciating each other behavior in a more objective manner by identifying one's self-worth and the worth of others. Similarly, let's talk about Johari window. This Johari window helps up in opening up the hidden area of the individuals through feedback, critical appraisal, which in turn leads to better communication and interpersonal relations amongst the individuals and enhance organizational effectiveness and of course, the commitment. Now, all these initiatives are not only important, but they are absolutely necessary in today's stressful working conditions, where the child ego states of the individuals tend to predominate the workstations and leads to communication gaps, which in turn hampers the organizational effectiveness. Let's review them in detail for enhanced understanding so that we can apply it in our organizational setups as organizational behavioral practices and improve the effectiveness of the organizations. Well, my dear students, we are talking of interpersonal relations and recalling the Herzberg's two-factor theory, if you have studied it nicely, you might remember that there are certain hygiene factors and there are motivational factors in this theory. In the hygiene factors, there is one aspect which is concerned with relations with others, apart from your pay, your job security, your working conditions, the company policies, 
and the salary and of course the quality of supervision on the other hand there are motivational factors like achievement career advancement personal growth challenging tasks recognition and responsibility now let's be more specific in explaining what are hygiene factors you know that hygiene factors are the ones whose presence will not motivate you but their absence will demotivate you on the other hand the motivational factors are the ones the presence of which will motivate you and their absence will demotivate you and when we see these hygiene factors i have told you that interpersonal relations be it with your superiors your subordinates and your colleagues matters a lot let's try to find out the importance of transactional analysis to improve interpersonal relations now the basis of transactional analysis are the three ego states in individuals personality these are the parent ego the adult ego and the child ego these ego states have nothing to do with the chronological age of the individuals but refers to the psychological age which is reflected in one's behavior and interactions with others let's recall the three ego states of transactional analysis the three ego states of transactional analysis are the parent ego the adult ego and the child ego interpersonal relations and ego states now my dear students it's very important to understand how these ego states determine our interpersonal relations as born states although we cannot directly observe these ego states we can observe behavior and from this infer which of the three ego states is operating at that moment now before we move ahead we need to understand what does it mean to have a parent ego state well in the parent ego state an individual tends to behave more in a nature of a parent by always dictating the right and the wrong behavior to the other person which can be of two kinds that is he may be following a nurturing parent ego or he may be following a critical parent ego in the parent ego state the nurturing parent is that part of a person which is understanding and caring about other people but at the same time set limits on and provide direction for people behavior it will not put the people down and make them feel not okay as individuals on the other hand a critical parent behavior attacks people's personalities as well as their behavior by being evaluative and judgmental and makes them feel that they are not okay now let's try to understand what is an adult ego state well this state evokes behavior that could be described simply as logical reasonable rational and unemotional behavior from the adult ego state is characterized by problem solving analysis and rational decision making the adult ego state again here people operating from the adult ego state are taking emotional content of their child ego state the value laden content of their parent ego state and checking them out in the reality of the external world these people are examining alternatives probabilities and values prior to engaging in behavior now the last stage is the child ego state 
This state is associated with behaviors that appear when a person is responding emotionally, encompassing the natural impulses and attitudes learned from child's experiences. There are several forms of the child ego state. However, two kinds of the ego states are the happy child and the destructive child, which are commonly relevant in their behavior. Okay, my dear students, let's talk about transactional analysis and understand what are the analysis of transactions which takes place with regard to different ego states. Now, TA for short for transactional analysis is usually used in management parlance and it may be used to explain why people behave in specific patterns throughout their lives. Now, this analysis enables people to identify the patterns of transactions between themselves and others. Ultimately, this can help us to determine which ego state most heavily influence our behavior and the behavior of other people with whom we interact on a daily basis, personally or professionally. In transactional analysis, there are two types of transactions which may be useful for managers to know. Let us find out what these transactions are. These could be in the nature of complementary or open transactions and these could be in the nature of non-complementary or cross transactions. Let us try to understand what are complementary or open transactions. When a response to a transaction is the expected and predictable one, communication can continue. Open transactions are adult to adult, child to child, parent to child and parent to parent. In open transactions, however, not all open transactions are beneficial. What we want to strive for in our relationships are okay open transactions like happy child to happy child transaction, nurturing parent to happy child transaction, adult to adult transaction, nurturing parent to nurturing parent transactions. Not okay transactions involve any of the laws healthy ego states. For example, critical parent to nurturing parent, rebellious child or a compliant child. Now you know there are different okay and open and not okay open transactions. A happy child in transaction 1, a parent to child transaction is a happy child transaction or it's called an okay transaction. While a critical parent to a happy child is not okay transaction and this is therefore not a complete transaction. Apart from this, there could be certain transactions which could be termed as blocked transactions. Now, unlike open transactions, the response is either inappropriate or unexpected as well as being out of context with what the sender of the stimulus had originally intended. Now, this occurs when a person responds with an ego state different from the one the other person was addressing. Now, one that results in the closing, at least temporarily, of communication. When people argue, a destructive blocked transaction is usually involved. By analyzing open and blocked transactions, it is possible to determine the various strengths of the three ego states. This in turn provides an indication of position the individual has selected. Open versus blocked transaction. See, the expected transaction is when the result or the outcome of the transaction is considered to be as expected, it is called an open transaction and when the resultant transaction is not as the one as expected, it is a blocked transaction. 
let's find out what are the benefits of transactional analysis we have understood what transactional analysis is what are the three ego states in transactional analysis and now let us find out what are the benefits of transactional analysis in improving interpersonal relationships well the first and the foremost benefit of transactional analysis is improved interpersonal communication between the members of the group in the organization then it is able to sense the crossed transaction or the crossed communication and is able to restore complementary communication amongst the team members third it leads to the general improvement in the interpersonal transactions which takes place in the organization over a period of time dear i have already explained you the meaning of life positions well life positions is an important part of transactional analysis theory which helps us in understanding others behavior better by exploring the life positions of each others as exhibited by their perception of self worth and others worth who are around them and with whom they interact on a daily basis personally or professionally now it has been frequently observed that people who have high self worth and low worth of others are usually poor at interpersonal relations they think themselves as superior in thinking and knowledge vis-a-vis others and thereby considers others as inferior to them which causes a lot of trouble in their interpersonal relations life positions tend to be more permanent than ego states my dear students we have just discussed about the various life positions now let us find out what these relationships can result from these life positions the four possible relationships resulting from the life positions are one i am not okay you are not okay this quadrant leads to the feeling of distrust of self and others where there is inability to cope up and need external help of others the second quadrant is i am not okay but you are okay leading to the feeling of dependency inadequacy and avoidance the third quadrant is i am okay you are okay leading to the feeling of high trust interdependence self confidence and resourcefulness the fourth quadrant is i am okay you are not okay leading to the feeling of controlling or discounting others a little bit of detail of what do i mean by my life position when i say i am not okay you are not okay well people with this life position usually give up early in life they do not trust other people and have no confidence in their self worth as well as of others let me just tell you here that people who are driven towards suicide are into this life position whereby they constantly feel that they are not okay and others are also not okay another quadrant which says i am not okay you are okay here people with this life position often come from their child ego state they feel that others are more capable and generally have fewer problems than they have so in this case they feel that others are all right but they are not as comfortable as others are another quadrant is where an individual feels that i am okay but you are not okay now these type of people often come their critical parent ego state they tend to be down on other people for at least two reasons first 
they often regard other people as source of criticism second they want to break away or rebel from some authority figure and become more independent i am okay you are okay this is the most important or this is the most favorable life position where a person feels that he is also okay and everything around or everybody around him is also okay now people with these feelings express confidence in themselves as well as trust and confidence in other people in their environment this life position is considered as a very healthy position and when people in a group have this feeling of i am okay you are okay they become a part of very productive groups or teams and contribute positively towards the organization these are the people whom we can say are the most successful or the most sought after by the effective and successful organizations now there is another concept called stroking if you have heard about it earlier this is also an important concept of ta which can be exhibited in the form of recognition that we usually get from people around us which can be either positive recognition negative feedback or attitude of indifference let's talk about johri window well the johri window model was developed by american psychologists luft and ingham they called this johri by combining their first names jo and harry another important aspect or which is very important to be understood by the practicing managers is the concept of johri window this is also called or a disclosure or a feedback model of self awareness as has already been told this model was developed by american psychologists joseph luft and harry ingham in the 1950s this model says that there are four panes or four windows in a person's personality let us discuss these panes one by one the jory window became widely used model for understanding and training self awareness and personal development for improving communications for improving interpersonal relationships for understanding group dynamics and for team development and intergroup relationships the jory window refers to self and others self means the person subject to the jory window analysis and others means the other people in the team the jory window actually represents information on one's feelings experience views attitudes skills intentions and motivation etc now within or about a person in relation to their group from the four perspectives now my dear students let's try to find out what all these four quadrants are all about as you know there are certain things which are known by me but unknown by others there are certain things which are unknown by others and they are unknown by me as well now let us find out what these quadrants are in the first quadrant we have the things which are known by me and which are also known by others this is this quadrant is an open area and which is mutually beneficial to both the parties then there is a blind spot which has certain assumptions misinformation bad decisions loss of situational awareness which are unknown by me but these are known by others this is the blind spot of the person on the other hand there is another blind spot where the things are known by me but they are unknown by others then there is another 
quadrant where the things are unknown by me as well as by others let's try to understand it a bit more detail in the four regions the one area is called the open area the second is called the blind area the third is the hidden area and the fourth is the unknown area now going back to the open area what is known by the person about him or herself is also known by others this is called the open self the free area the free self or the arena the second quadrant the blind area what is unknown by the person about himself or herself but is known to the others this is called the blind area the blind self or the blind spot then there is another quadrant which is the hidden area now here what the person knows about him or herself that others do not know is a part of this hidden area this is called the hidden area the hidden self the avoided area the avoided self or the facade the fourth quadrant is the unknown area where what is unknown by the person about him or herself is also unknown by others this is also called the unknown area or the unknown self now my dear students this jory window is quite important to understand and let us repeat the things which we have learned so far to understand and imbibe it in our daily lives to start with as we can say in the jory window panes each quadrant is of the same size but the size can be changed to reflect the relevant proportions of each type of knowledge about a particular person in a given time situation in new teams the open or the free space for any team member is small because shared awareness is relatively small but as the team member becomes better established and known the size of the team members open area or the quadrant increases the first quadrant the open area or the free area or the public area or the arena is also known as the area of free activity here the information about the person his behavior his attitudes feelings emotions knowledge experience skills views etc known by the person the self and known by the team others the aim in any team is to develop the open area for every person because when we work in this area with others we are at our most effective and productive and the team is at its most productive too the open free area or the arena the space where good communications and cooperation occur free from distractions mistrust confusion conflict and misunderstanding let us find out its implications on the team members now the established members tend to have larger open areas than new team members new members start with relatively small open areas because relatively little knowledge about the new team member is shared other members can help a team member expand their open area by offering feedback now the size of the open area can also be expanded vertically downwards into the hidden or avoided space by the person's disclosure of information feelings etc about him herself to the team and the other team members now the purpose of the jory window is to increase the open area through feedback the increasing the open area by reduction of the blind area by asking for and then receiving feedback this can also be developed through the process of disclosure which reduces the hidden area now the unknown area can be reduced in different ways by others observation which increases the blind area by self discovery which increases the hidden area by mutual enlightenment via group experiences and discussion which increases the open area as the unknown area reduces in the second quadrant 
which is shown by the blind self or the blind area or the blind spot what is known about a person by others in the group but is unknown by the person himself now this could be referred to as ignorance about oneself or issues in which one is deluded not an effective or productive space for individuals or groups it also includes issues that others are deliberately withholding from a person now the aim is to reduce this area by seeking or soliciting feedback from others and thereby to increase the open area that is to increase self awareness the team members and managers take responsibility for reducing the blind area in turn increasing the blind open area by giving sensitive feedback and encouraging disclosure now here the managers promote a climate of non judgmental feedback and group response to individual disclosure and reduce the fear the hidden self or the hidden area or the avoided area or the facade what is known to ourselves but kept hidden from and therefore unknown to others it represents information feelings etc anything that a person knows about himself but which is not revealed or is kept hidden from others it also includes sensitivities fears hidden agendas manipulative intentions secrets anything that a person knows but does not reveal relevant hidden information and feelings etc should be moved into the open area through the process of self disclosure and exposure process organizational culture and working atmosphere have a major influence on team members preparedness to disclose their hidden selves the unknown self or the area of unknown activity here the information feelings latent abilities aptitudes experiences etc are unknown to the person himself and are unknown to the others in the group as well It can be prompted through self discovery or observation by others or through collective or mutual discovery now basically johari window for new team member and member within the same team the open area is small because others know little about the new person similarly the blind area is small because others know little about the new person the hidden or the avoided issues and feelings are a relatively larger area and the unknown area is the largest which might be because the person is lacking in self knowledge or belief all right my dear students now let us summarize what we have learned so far in this module we have already learned the importance of interpersonal relations and it has been established in the lesson with the help of understanding and applying the concept of transactional analysis life positions and johari window to improve the level of communication in the organization across the various hierarchies now transactional analysis is the study of social transactions between people donning the mask of a parent an adult or a child ego state now it has been observed that an adult to adult complementary transaction is especially desirable at work whereas cross transactions tend to cut off communication and produce conflicts transaction analysis is essentially a learning experience through which an individual discovers how to sort out the data that goes into his decisions now this approach is useful to improve the interpersonal communications and relations in the organization and of course in the social life as well now another important concept of transactional analysis is the study of life positions this study of life positions shows the acceptance of self and others and also the worth of self and others in the form of life positions depicting the four quadrants which gives employees 
fresh insights into their own personalities. Now, another method to improve interpersonal relations and understanding is looking through the four panes of the Johri window that encourages disclosure and feedback to increase our own open area so that both you and your colleagues are aware of your perceptual limitations and are able to reduce the blind, hidden and the unknown area through disclosure. That is, informing others of your own beliefs, your feelings, your experiences, your value systems, your attitudes, your dreams, your desires, all this is very important to open up, to increase and improve the interpersonal communication, which will influence the work relations to a greater extent. Now, all the above methods discussed above can be very helpful for the practicing managers at their workplace. To say it all, it is very useful both at the personal level as well as at the professional level. Thank you.